anonymity, but which are different concepts, and uh, we have had several sessions about anonymity, and we are going to talk about privacy here. The famous distinction that uh, has been quite uh, significant in the media recently between metadata and data. We are only talking about the privacy of the data, not about the privacy of the metadata here. And um, recently, or very recently, uh, revelations of uh, rogue government activity rise only uh, to the more paranoid among conspiracy theorists. Uh, have been revealed, and uh, this has, of course, uh, produced an uptick in interest regarding uh, products that are private or ensure privacy by design. And uh, the way to ensure privacy uh, is almost always going through the technology of encryption. So we'll also talk. Uh, we'll talk about encryption in this context, and. Uh, True privacy by design can only be ensured by encryption that goes from end to end. Anything that allows the intermediary stages to decrypt or to uh, get to the keys is not private by design. And uh, can I just stop you, yeah. Does everyone know what that means, encryption by end to end? Um, put your hand up if you do know what that means. Okay. So maybe you can just. Okay, so end to end encryption it. simply means that. The device that uh, sends, let's talk in a context where information is transmitted over a network, which is quite common nowadays. So only if the sending machine or sending device performs the encryption and the receiving device decrypts the same encrypted data, then it is end-to-end -end encrypted. And the key management has to occur in a way that uh, no centralized stage is holding plain text keys, meaning that uh, there's no central repository from which symmetric keys can be derived that would be uh, 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 sufficient to decrypt the communication. So this is uh, what I call privacy by design. Anything that falls short of that is maybe private, but uh, private by policy, meaning that the operator of the service or of the infrastructure has to actively maintain the privacy. It's not inherent to the product. It's not private by design. Any questions, any comments, any criticism? That basically means uh, <coughs> uh, the provider uh, also has to secure the privacy if he can't because it's forced by law to reveal data to some other agency like government and to do it. Right. Privacy by design should also be robust against uh, such government requests. If it is uh, truly by design, then the government request has to be declined because there's no way, no technical way for the provider to comply. And uh, in order to strengthen the uh, confidence of the users into the uh, design of that uh, product, it has to also be inherently open source. A closed source product can never be private by design uh, in a verifiable way. So uh, ideally, such products are always open source and uh, scrutinizable by experts. And uh, if there are flaws in the design, these flaws should be identifiable and uh, should be uh, fixable. Otherwise, uh, there's a fundamental flaw in the product's architecture. Uh, some. Uh, issues uh, arose uh, around the way of delivering the product to the customer. Ultimately, if, you, if it's a software-based product, it has to somehow get to the customer's device. If you install it from a source that is not trusted, you might get a version that contains backdoors, Trojans, or worse, if the provider is forced by government activity to get to the data of a specific customer, that customer might actually be served a Trojan version specifically, just uh, him, not, not the other uh, customers. And uh, there's, for example, scenarios where uh, Microsoft Windows or uh, Mac OS or any product, even Linux distributions, could be targeted that way uh, through their auto-update mechanisms, where specific customers are served with a modified binary that nobody else gets that uh, will then uh, provide a backdoor to the requesting government agency. Uh, 
there's no known cases of that happening, but it's a theoretical possibility. And uh, so it must be uh, guaranteed that the mechanism of delivery of the code to the client's machine is secure, and that's best done through uh, certificates, cryptographic certificates that go beyond the SSL infrastructure, which is quite, uh, quite vulnerable to government activity. And uh, then the initial install is still a problem. You have to get a third-party source for, for cryptographic hashes. So to make it pretty bulletproof, you basically should publish hashes in newspapers and then verify these. But most uh, vendors don't go that far. So the bottom line here is that we have to trust the provider of the... Of no, the you software. don't. If the provider provides the product open source, and uh, there is realistic scrutiny of that uh, open source product, and people look at it, people who have sufficient knowledge, and come up with no backdoors, flaws, bugs, then the product can be trusted, even though the vendor is not trusted. Except that I still have to believe it. Except that I still have to believe that you have deployed the code which you have allowed me to that, and there's no way to do that except trusting you. Well, if you deploy the code uh, as plain text, as, uh, as, as a source code, which JavaScript, for example, does, then you can make that bridge without problems. If you deploy it as a binary, famous example is uh, the product TrueCrypt that is being deployed as binary. It's also open source, but some people have uh, made allegations that the TrueCrypt binaries are not the same as the uh, compiled version of the available open source code. Um, there's no confirmation, no positive confirmation of that, but uh, in ultimately you want to compile it yourself and compare the binary with the binary that is running on your machine. I need an example um, to work this around. You talk about to end encryption. Let's say if I have uh, an SSH session from my machine to my um, server, and my private key is on my machine, and the public key is on the server. Is that end to end encryption? By design, according to your definition? That is not end to end encryption in the way that uh, the whole chain of transmission is uh, protected. It is a session between you and the server. The server is not a, a receiving device that uh, basically gets the data that you uh, push through the system. It is end to end in the sense that if anyone sits in the wire or in the routers or anywhere in between you and your server, uh, it is protected, but end-to-end -end is from the end-user's device to the end-user's device. Whether you define server as an end-user device is a matter of definition. It could be called end-to-end -end encryption in okay. that context. Okay, so in your architecture, what is different in that? Where, where are the differences in where the key is sent or, or in the design of the software? What is end-to-end -end encryption basically just means that uh, the information that you transmit, for example, an email service, uh, we can talk about PGP. If you encrypt your email on your own machine and the recipient decrypts the email on his or her own machine, that is end-to-end -end encryption. Even though the mail server stored the email and handled the email and forwarded it and uh, delivered it to, to the end machine, there is no decryption happening on by any of the machines in between. So that is end-to-end -end encryption. So essentially, like Jared Kramer, essentially you're um, defining this as, uh, as it relates to services for the storage of data or the communication Correct. of information. Correct. Not so all services are suitable for that. Yeah, yeah. So you're, not, you're not doing anything with the data in the middle. Correct. So you cannot. Data. That's a limitation. You cannot do anything with the data in the middle. You cannot, for example, uh, do any uh, kind of conversion of, of formats or you cannot search, although that might be possible with some uh, client-side search and the client-side generated search. Hi, I'm uh, Tom Speaker from Tech Limousine. Um, I just wanted to ask, is end-to-end -end encryption possible in an environment where you've got like the, uh, the Microsoft Store, the Apple Store, the Google Play Store, where they're actually managing code which then gets put onto the machines? That's very difficult to tell because uh, these uh, stores have uh, update mechanisms that do not uh, necessarily uh, have the same level of security that would be necessary to verify updates. End-to-end um, -end encryption is a property of the product itself, so it could be delivered to, through these stores. There's no encryption happening with the products in those stores, but the uh, cryptographic signing of these updates provides a certain level of security, but the real security is only when the vendor itself 
does the signal signing and not the uh, the store, which I think I'm not exactly sure how the different stores work, but uh, if the store or if the, if the operator of the store does the signing, then there is a big security hole between the delivery of the uh, update and the signing by by the vendor uh, or by the operator of the store. That's a very good question. Uh, legislation around cryptography has been a hot topic for many years. Uh, some governments have tried to uh, restrict the use of encryption. Uh, many have tried, or many have restricted the export of encryption. Uh, there is a very nice page put together by Peter Goodman about uh, various countries' uh, crypto laws. I'm not really aware of much enforcement happening in that space, at least not in uh, non-oppressive regimes. But in theory, uh, many countries, as far as I can tell uh, by reading that page, could prosecute you for using encryption or for making products that provide encryption or by sending products that encrypt across borders. So it's, it's a very interesting topic and uh, governments, of course, see encryption as a threat because uh, Unfortunately, contrary to what uh, one of the GC or one of the GCSB uh, director, ex-director of the GCB said today, they are not uh, able to keep up with the arms race of strong encryption. There is no way that by investing a little bit more or significantly more, they can realistically break uh, keys of modern cycles. There is no way. Is it possible to deploy this in... Sorry, sorry. I lost the topic from Scoop. Um, is it possible to deploy this inside a cell phone browser? Absolutely. Modern cell phones are more, far more powerful than uh, computers a couple of years ago. And uh, although it's not ideal from a battery use perspective, it is very possible and uh, you should try it. It works. But uh, I hope that the uh, APIs for performing cryptography in JavaScript directly will make this much faster. Right now it's all uh, happening with a lot of overhead, but that will change with the web crypto API that is being proposed. So one of the business model problems with end-to-end -end encryption for most um, internet companies at this point is that it doesn't allow for looking through the content to tailor things like ads. So what do you think encryption does to um, uh, the financial model behind posting content? Well, uh, I don't know if Google, for example, for, for uh, Google Drive customers or Microsoft for SkyDrive customers actually looks at the content of the files to deliver tailored ads. If they did, that would be a big concern for me as a customer. So I think it's, it's positive for the end user because the end user knows that there's no automated scrutiny of uh, all of the files that they keep in their accounts, which is desirable. They probably uh, would be less uh, or feel less threatened if the uh, scrutiny happened to just the file names. And uh, it's still possible to do a limited uh, target ad delivery by having the client deliver, again, open to scrutiny by, by the community, deliver uh, certain keywords, just look for certain keywords happening or occurring in the file names and delivering that back to the ad server, but in a very limited, to a very limited extent. Is Mega doing that? We don't do that. We don't have ads on the site. Uh, at least we hope to be able to keep it like that forever. Uh, it's not yet sure whether the business uh, is sustainable completely without ads, but we will not be like Google, uh, who display advertising <coughs> according to the contents of your emails. That will not happen, that cannot happen for technical reasons, and we see it as uh, a bonus, we see it as good for the customer. Okay, I just wanted to ask if you, um, into in encryption is really useful for storage type platforms, um, and opening this out to the audience, what about where you're going to be doing things to the data, so you can't have it in encryption, what sort of um, design for privacy is optimal in that situation. Do you have any comments on that? I'll comment. Okay, so uh, end-to-end -end encryption uh, is limiting 
the scope of what a service can do, as we've already discussed. So you cannot do certain things. It would be very difficult to have a site like Facebook with secure end-to-end -end encryption. Some sites inherently require uh, the data to be open and available and searchable and uh, accessible uh, to the public without first exchanging keys. So uh, some services will not get around to uh, leaving the security or privacy by design uh, stage and uh, do it by policy and just give assurance to the customer that they will maintain the customer's privacy, uh, but they have to explicitly do it. They have to act. It's not built into the product. So I would not call it by design, but uh, it's an extension of the privacy concept that is important to many types of services that cannot do end-to-end -end encryption for uh, reasons that are obviously the type of service. So as a lawyer, we quite often gets to advise on um, websites and give them uh, advice about privacy. Um, how many designers or people who are actually building things from scratch have privacy as at your forethought when you start designing something? Can I have a show of hands? That's, that's better than I thought it might be, so that's good. Um, I guess one of the really important parts of privacy we're talking about um, mega, it's encrypted, it can't be, information can't be given away, but privacy is not just about what can't be given away, it's about when things can be given. Sometimes you have privacy rules because you want your information to go somewhere, you just want rules about it. And um, I'm interested in the technological design features that you can use to make sure that happens. That, sorry, Alistair Thompson from the Superior Union. I mean, that, that's a nice segue into talking about mega box and mega key. So, essentially, publishing at the moment, web publishing, is, is the process of giving JavaScript to just about everybody under the sun to run on, on your browsers. Most people, I, don't, I mean, it would be worth explaining that, I think, to, to people so that they understand a little bit about what, why do we want privacy on demand, or why do we want privacy by design. Um, how, how would you, how could you respond to that? From a, I mean, if you intercept and you remove the ads and you put back ads which you have proper privacy control over, is that is that is that the plan? Well, the uh, privacy settings uh, can, of course, control what the customer expects in terms of privacy, and that's again privacy by policy. There is no technical, uh, verifiable enforcement. The operator could do anything on their servers. They could uh, have a bug that uh, completely uh, removes all the privacy enforcement. Uh, for example, Dropbox had a flaw that uh, allowed anyone to log into any account without or with any random password. Uh, that would not work with a product that is uh, following the private by privacy by design uh, design principles because you need to 